PC optimizers. They come in different shapes and sizes, from the good to the bad and to the downright ugly. And one of the most controversial tweaks between optimizers is timer resolution. And it's also the most lied about optimization. With so many different opinions and lies, there's bound to be a lot of confusion surrounding it. In this video, I'm going to clear up those lies for you and show you how to actually set up timer resolution. I'm also going to show benchmarks of before and after timer res and go in depth as to why timer res actually works. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, boys. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is join my Discord. The link will be in the description for it. Once you're in my Discord, head over to the YouTube Tweaks channel here on the left. And then at the bottom here, find the file that says like set up timer resolution or how to set up timer resolution. It'll be the bottom file down here. So you can see this one says disable or remove defender because that was for my latest video as of right now. But after I upload this video, of course, I'm gonna put the timer resolution file in here. So just go ahead and download it. Once you have it, extract it with 7-zip and put it on your desktop. Once you have it on your desktop, you can go ahead and open it up. So timer res is actually really easy to set up. We do have a couple things we want to do first. The first thing we're going to want to do is fix our Windows timers. So go ahead and open up this and you can see the timer fix. Of course, this is all open source and you can right click and edit and see exactly what it's doing here. Basically what these commands are doing are disabling HPET on the Windows side. I'm going to go into that more in just a second here. But basically this is just removing any extra schedulers or security overhead so we can keep the timer steady. And this is what's actually making timer res improve our 0.1% lows and reducing our input delay. So once you're ready to run this, we can close out of this, open up power run, then click file, and then allow command line, and then close out of this, and then just drag the timer res bat over power run, and that'll run it and close. And then the next thing we're gonna wanna do is open up device manager. And then here we can see it says disable HPET and system timer. So again, same purpose. We just wanna remove the OS side of it. So in device manager, it's under system devices. So just expand this, and then you can see it's high precision event timer. Go ahead and disable that scroll down and then system timer disable that too now i'm going to show you guys exactly why we're disabling these things and that way you guys understand and to also kind of clear up some of the lies other pc optimizers tell you so if we open up read write everything you guys don't need this software for the video i'm just using this to explain something real quick and if we go to our acpi tables and then we go all the way here to the right and then open up our dsdt table let's go ahead and expand this so it's easier to see now if we press Control f on this and then search up hpet so you see this line of code here what this is basically telling you is that if hpet is enabled windows always gets a return of 0x0f and that means that the motherboard is forcing HPET on so even if we disable it in Windows the motherboard is always going to force HPET and that's why we're stuck on HPET which is technically a slower timer but there's nothing you can do about it unless you flash a custom DSDT table which of course has an incredibly high risk of breaking your motherboard and you can't use secure boot TPM anything like that if you do that as well so you can't even play your favorite games regardless and the reason why I'm showing you this is because there's some optimizers out there which tell you just need to run a few commands or disable HPET and device manager and then now you're on a timer called TSC instead of HPET, which is way faster. And on paper, TSC is faster, but you can never actually use TSC because of this line of code right here. In literally the early 2010s, Motherboard started adding this code, which is forcing HPET. So there's nothing you can really do to get around this. But the idea is that we let the hardware take control of these timers. And that's why we're still disabling HPET in the device manager because letting the OS control it is legacy. We don't want that. We want our hardware just to give true one-to-one -one input. I did make a tweet about this back in May, kind of explaining it, but I basically just wanted to clear up that false rumor and let you guys know that HPET is still used. There's nothing you can do about it, but I basically just wanted to clear up that false rumor. People do like to spread misinformation without verifying the facts or just simply checking the code of the DSTT table. And this is why using timer resolution is actually good. And I'm going to show you guys the benchmarks at the end as well. But anyways, enough of that. Hopefully that made sense to you guys. If you guys have any questions about that, just let me know. But I'm going to close out of rewrite everything and then continue with the video. So once you've disabled HPET and system timer in the device manager, go back and then go to timer resolution setup. Open the one that says put this in C drive you have a set timer resolution application in here so just press ctrl c on it or right click and then copy it and then open up the c drive shortcut i have here and then just simply paste it in there and then go back to and then this one that says put this in shell startup open this one same thing, copy this one or right click and click copy, open up shell startup and then paste it in here. You can close out of this. You can go back to the main folder here. Once you're done with that, you're actually good. You can restart the computer now and then now you have timer resolution set up properly. I do kind of want to go over the benchmarks here. So for you guys who care about the benchmarks, we can see. So this is with timer resolution off with Fortnite open and this is with timer resolution on with Fortnite open. So you can see the difference here. Again, if we look at the 0.1% lows, you can see with it on it's way better. And this is literally just because you're getting faster frame time delivery. So again, next, this is Fortnite rebuilding. You can see our 0.1% lows are way higher with timer resolution on. And then you can see the latency difference here with it on. We're always under two milliseconds. Whereas timer resolution is off, we're only under two milliseconds about half the time. In this yellow case here, we can see we're over eight milliseconds in some instances too. But anyways, that's it guys. I hope that kind of clears up some of the misinformation spread about timer res and show you guys how to properly set it up as well as provide some
provide some benchmarks. Instead of just yapping and talking about nonsense, I want to show you guys proof too. So here we go. Obviously, feel free to benchmark it yourself on your own system. See if you get similar results or anything different. I'd love to hear you guys' results. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you like the video, be sure to like the video. Subscribe if you're new here. At the time of recording, we're almost at 500 subscribers, which is insane. That was literally my goal for the end of 2025. And we still have like three to four months to go to 2026. So I'm setting a new goal of a thousand subscribers before 2026. Other than that though, guys, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.